What's up everybody, it's George Gabriel and this is Logic Pro Disasters. Episode one starts in five seconds. This is a new episodic series that I'm starting that addresses some of the horrors that I see in people's Logic Pro sessions. So in this episode of Logic Pro Disasters, I'll be showing content from a session I had with somebody who used my services in the iMix You Learn. Now before we get started, be sure to click that subscribe button, click the bell icon to be notified of future videos. I wanna be able to continue to provide these videos for you and that helps the cause here. But also check out georgegable.com. With the iMix You Learn, you too could be part of a session where I help you mix your tune and master your tune and show you the things that are going on in your session so you can improve your workflow. But let's get started with this particular episode, Library Plugin Purgatory, in which the subject I'm consulting with Dylan has shown me his Logic session. And what I address is the fact that he's using Logic Library and how many ridiculous amounts of plugins that he brought into the session by using Logic Library. So let's listen into that interaction. First off, just have a couple questions. There's a lot of plugins here. Were you using Logic Library on this? Is that, I assume that's like the stock plugins that, that you get yeah. with Logic? Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All, all of the sounds are. Yeah. All right. So just a general note, because the whole purpose of this is so you learn, you know, how to do this more efficiently and, mm -hmm. and more properly is Logic Library. I'm not a fan of at all. And mostly because you see all these plugins here that are mm -hmm. completely not even used. What Logic Library likes to do is throw a ton of plugins in, and what it does is it really loads down your system. So if you're looking at literally hundreds of plugins here, and maybe a third of them are not even turned on. Mm -hmm. and, and so kind of what I teach people to do is find the sound by using the software instruments versus using library, because whoever did this at Apple, they put a whole bunch of stuff. No, nobody uses like 50 plugins on something or, you know, 10 plugins or even five plugins. So what it does is it unnecessarily brings in literally hundreds of plugins for no good reason. And really what you want to do is you want to find a good sound and then add plugins as needed. And that's one of the points that I make in all of this is that using Logic Library, it brings in the possibility of lots of plugins. Now, I know those are you're going to say, well, you can bypass the plugins. That is true. However, most users don't do that. They just go searching around. They go, what's, what's this? What's that? There's a much more efficient way to do this. And that is actually going into Logic and dialing up a software instrument and finding exactly what it is that you want and then adding the effects as needed. It's going to help your session. It's going to make things look a lot cleaner. And you only use the process power that you need to use, not all the stuff that Logic brings in. Not to mention the fact that when you start to put in 10 plugins, it really makes your mix tracks look ridiculous and it's not necessary and it's confusing. One of the things with using a lot of tracks in library and depending on the computer you have, you could be sucking down your processing power. See the audio engine in Logic and in any DAW for that matter, has to give some resources to those areas, especially if they're activated. So now you're doing a lot of extra processing for no reason. And Dylan had a problem with hitting some walls in his processing. And let's just listen to that interaction. And does that help considerably with like system overload problems too? Yeah. I mean, at one point I will count your plugins and <laughs> just cause I'm curious, but I'm guessing you have 200 plugins. I was going to say it's gotta be over a hundred. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So with 200 plugins, every single one of those is demanding stuff from the audio. And then on top of that, you have everything screaming loud. So that is affecting your audio as well. Mm -hmm. So there's too many cars in the parking lot. This whole thing could be simplified tremendously. And this is why I'm going to do a, a video. And this might be the example of why mm -hmm. using Logic Library is a disaster. Um, yeah, definitely. <laughs> if we were going to an audio screen, I mean, look at this. Yeah. Now seeing you lay out the correct way to do it, that makes so much more sense in terms of even just efficiency of plugins and stuff. But that being the way that Logic sets it up when you first are like learning how to use it is so misleading then. That's so weird. It very much is. So now let's just look at these. So you got two reverbs on this one, right? Mm -hmm. You got another reverb, so that's three. Four reverbs, 
five reverbs, and I'm just looking at Space Designer. Six reverbs, mm -hmm. seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 21 Space Designers. Now those are impulse response. They take a lot of processing power. That's just one plugin that I'm looking at here. Mm -hmm. And you got it 21 times, and you have a bunch of instances where they're in, but they're not turned on. Mm -hmm. So it just becomes like, what am I even looking at? There's way too many plugins going on here. Yeah, and I think that's the issue that I have. There is a right way to do this and there's a wrong way to do this. And logic leads you down this path on where it's like, hey, we give you the library and hey, you have all these sounds and people tend to gravitate to that. I get it. You're new to the software. You're trying to figure it out. There's this library and here's all these opportunities to use these sounds. The problem is, is they put way too many plugins and you don't have to do it that way. There's a way cleaner way to do this. And that's what I explained to Dylan in this session. If you have an auto load and if you're using the tab system that I created, which goes tracks, auxiliaries to affect your effects that instead of using those 21 reverbs, you can use one reverb because you probably, a lot of them are the same reverb. And then you collect everything into buses and then those buses go to the stereo out. And I illustrated this with Dylan earlier in the session. As you heard, he said, oh, now that you show me how you're supposed to do it, it makes sense. Let me show you what I was showing him. So for instance, these are multiple different alchemy instruments, right? So they're all lumped together. Now, did you go ahead and create these folders for them? Yes, yeah, I don't fully know. I think I've kind of gotten the impression that what I'm trying to replicate is what buses are supposed to do, but I only understand it insofar as making summing stacks that apply things right. to a group. Right. So the idea would be to start with a session that actually has all your buses figured out ahead of time. It's called an auto load. And every time I go into a session, I start with my auto load because it has all my tracks. It has my audio. It has my software tracks. And a lot of it's hidden in this thing called the environment in the background. If you were to go to a tracking studio, you know, they're going to have a mixing board and each channel on the mixing board is essentially like your track in Logic. And then if you want to affect that track or that channel in a, in a studio, there's auxiliaries where you plug in other effects that are outboard gear, basically. And then you mm -hmm. you put a little bit of a send of that track to that effect. And that effect basically returns 100% wet. So you have the original sound on the channel, but then on another return, you have have just the effects coming in. So that way you can dial it in. What happens when you start to put a whole lot of effects on channels is you're using a lot of extra effects that you don't need to use. In other mm -hmm. words, you put a reverb here and this is the same reverb you want to use on seven or eight instruments. You only really need one reverb and you use the auxiliary to send it. That's what these sends are right here. So you would actually send it to your auxiliary and oh, okay. you would on a mixing board. Actually, I can show it to you now. So can you see this? Yep. All right. So basically what's happening here is I have all my audio tracks. I've just put eight up to begin with. And then I have all my software instruments and I have my multi timbral software instruments as well. But what happens is you're like, well, I need more than 14 tracks. There's something in Logic called the environment. And this is where I create all of the extra tracks that I can dial up at any given time that I want to. So I have mm -hmm. an instruments area and I have an audio area. So I can have up to 64 audio tracks. And then I also create in here all of my auxiliaries for effects, a couple of side chains in case I want to do side chains. This is my auxiliaries for my inputs. So most people don't have five mic pre's. I happen to have five mic pre's. You probably are using like a Scarlet or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you, you only really need two mic pre's. Is it a two channel or is it a one channel? Uh, It's a two channel, I think. Yeah, so you'd have aux one and aux two and you have them both mono. Yeah. So if you're playing guitar and singing, you'd have two different discrete channels. But this you'll notice is muted. And the reason why it's muted is because I don't want this coming in right now. So I always mm -hmm. keep it muted. Now I have one stereo out and then this is where I create all my buses and one effects return. So the way that this works is basically you'll notice that all my tracks here are already assigned to a bus. They're not assigned to stereo output. And when I want to dial up a new one, I have a key command that I just hit F6 and the next one comes up from the background. And what it's doing is it's going back to that environment and pulling all those things. You'll notice it's already assigned to a bus. So you, you'll never have the mistake of going from tracks to stereo out. You'll always be going to buses. So you dial up your instruments and instead of using live 
library, what you do is you go to the instrument and like, hey, I'm going to check out Alchemy and I'm going to find some Alchemy instrument that I really like. And you know they mm-hmm. have ways you can browse them and whatever. So you find, let's say I want an organ, uh, house organ, you know, whatever. This is a terrible sound, but let's just use it. <laughs> so now you'll notice there's no effects on this, right? It's already assigned to synth one. I just by default have my instruments all going to synth one bus. So when I play it, you'll see it shows up on this bus. And then these buses are outputted to my stereo out, which is right here. Mm. So basically it's being sent to here and then sent to here. Now, if I want to affect this, instead of throwing a reverb on here, I have three different reverbs and a stereo delay as my auxiliaries up here. And so what I do is I'll say, hey, I want to throw some reverb on this. I'll send it to my effects one. And as I turn the volume up, it sends a portion of that signal Mm. to my reverb. So now if I really like this reverb, I'm only using one reverb and I can send any instruments that I want this reverb to have just to go over here. One thing you'll notice that all of these effects are returned to a bus. So if I want to have my effects be more present, I can take all my effects and dial them up or down here. Of course, I could do that here too, but I like to try to keep things as zero as much as possible. Mm-hmm. So does this make sense what I'm saying? Yeah, it does. That is crazy. I, I knew there would be some mind blowing thing like that, but I, I was like, how did I not already know to be doing that? But yeah, that makes well, a lot of sense. Honestly, logic doesn't prepare you for that. What it does yeah gives you a session and it gives you this library that's enticing like oh i could just dial up sounds but what happens is you now have eight million plugins and when you create a summing stack or a track stack it creates additional buses so it Mm -hmm. becomes a nightmare i never ever 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 use library yeah that makes Uh, sense yeah so i mean i think that is the greater point here is that not only does logic actually uh create buses which actually they're not even buses they're auxiliaries so they show up in a different area but every time you do a summing stack it's creating an auxiliary for you instead the idea of using a auto load where you pre-set up your buses in the environment you pre-set up your auxiliaries and everything is dialed in that you can grab from the background that's already dialed into a bus and has everything like ready to go it just sets up the same mix environment, whether you're doing something that has three tracks or something that has 150 tracks. Later on in that session, I showed Dylan a movie score that I was doing that had over 100 tracks. And you can see in that session, it's the same exact layout. There is no trying to figure out where I'm going. And Dylan commented on on the ease of that as far as being able to preserve the consistency. Let's take a listen. I guess it feels like that could preserve that kind of consistency of sound where I feel like I never really know how artists do that. Like if they, if you want multiple songs in an EP or something to sound kind of the same, like is that usually, do you think how how that's happening? That makes sense. So think about it, how they, I always approach it like they do it in a professional studio because a big artist is going to go into a professional studio. They're going to have a mixing board. They're going to have outboard gear. They're going to book out the room for a month and a half or whatever it is. Everything is going to be hooked up the same way. And that's how you get that consistency. Essentially you're doing Mm -hmm. the same thing, but you're doing it digitally you know on in mm-hmm. a dock so this is mm-hmm. totally blown out now you'll see what happens wow. here is this is all pre-mastered all these buses are pre-mastered mm-hmm. right and, the, and you'll notice that their levels are minus uh, they're very low right and they're all sent here so they're already each so the drums are pre-mastered the loops are pre-mastered and so when you like to... can you hear this okay mm-hmm. so you'll see like these are all, if I were just to take this, soloing this bus. And here's my orchestral drums. Right? Yeah. Now I'm all using this reverb. I'm using one. This whole score has two reverbs on it. That's it. There's no wow. reverbs on the tracks. This whole score. Why? Because I'm trying to create, I mean, what is reverb? If you're going to go see an orchestra, they're playing in a room. The reverb is the room coming back at you. Mm-hmm. So that's exactly what you want to do. I probably had another reverb because I had to do some source cues, which means they're in a bar or something like that. So I created yeah. another reverb for the sound of that bar. Mm-hmm. So the key is when you have an auto load and you have a tab system, you can dial up your own sounds and affect them the way that you want to without having all of the logic extras put in. 
and you're not adding these extra auxiliaries and all these extra buses that uh, Logic puts in with it. And you have a clean session. You can see that that session that I had, that's movie score I did, had over 100 tracks. But everything was nice and dialed in. And another point is using that tab system, you pre-master your buses. So each little bus has its own little mastering chain on primarily compressing and EQing. And then they all go to the stereo out for your final mastering chain. It's a much cleaner approach. So don't settle for this logic library disaster and get out of plug-in purgatory by using this technique and dialing in the sound the way you want to. But what do you think about this? Is this a disaster that is part of all of your sessions that you're having to contend with? I wanna be able to dialogue with you, so leave your comment below. I wanna see what kind of things you're dealing with in Logic in plugin purgatory. Also, if you want to be part of a video like this, make sure you check out georgegabriel.com where you can sign up for iMix You Learn and we can do this together and I can be consulting with you on your mix. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, click that subscribe button, click the bell icon to be notified of future videos. Follow me on Instagram at gabrielmusic and check out georgegabriel.com. And I look forward to the next episode of Logic Pro Disasters where I can help you address potential horrors in Logic and get your sessions straight. I'll see you next time on George Gabriel Music.